Hey everybody, welcome to this video where I would like to derive for you the formula, the differential equation that describes the motion of a pendulum. Um, I have an animation of a pendulum here. Pretty cool, right? Would love to take credit for it, but I cannot. I found this animation on Desmos, and if you look at the description below, you'll see that uh, I've put a link there in case you are interested, and there's a lot of really cool things in that animation that you can mess around with. So we are going to describe this, uh, this motion, and what we are going to do is use a formula from a physics class. This would be from a first semester physics mechanics. Um, it is uh, what is called the conservation of energy. And the conservation of energy says that the kinetic energy, the energy that is created by an object moving, plus the potential energy, the potential energy that can be gained by an object moving, has, those two things have to add up to a constant value. Um, what we will be taking advantage of is that in our pendulum case, what is going to happen is that as the pendulum is gaining kinetic energy, as it is speeding up and gaining kinetic energy, it is going to be losing potential energy in the exact same, uh, at the exact same level, right? So that the sum there would always be the same. Similarly, as the pendulum is swinging up and gaining potential energy, it is going to be losing kinetic energy so that the sum ends up being the same. So we have this formula, kinetic energy plus potential energy is equal to a constant. Kinetic energy, one half mass times the velocity squared, potential energy, mass times gravity, multiplied by the height. Okay, so we'll, let's introduce a couple of variables here. The angle that the pendulum is making with the vertical is theta of t. That is a function because it will be changing. L is going to be the length of the string that is holding on to the pendulum. We are going to make the assumption that that string is massless. And it turns out that, as long, that even if it isn't massless, but as long as the mass at the end of the string is significantly more than the string, then this ends up being an okay thing with with the derivation. And then, as I said there, the mass m is the mass that is at the end of the pendulum. Okay, so let's start by looking at the kinetic energy. I'm going to borrow something from a trig class. If I look at this part of the, the uh, this pendulum swing that I put in orange, this is an arc length. We can think of this as part of a giant circle. The arc length formula s is equal to l times theta. L is the radius of the circle, theta is that central angle. Again, I wrote that S is a function of T because as the pendulum is moving, the arc length is going to end up changing. And then what we are going to do is take the derivative of that formula, S equal L times theta, with respect to T. Take the derivative with respect to T. Um, L, the length of the pendulum, is constant, so I will get that ds dt is equal to L times d theta dt. ds dt, that's the rate at which the arc length is changing, that is the velocity. How fast is the mass moving along that arc length? So what I get is that the velocity is equal to L times d theta dt. Moving over to the potential energy part of the equation, we need to figure out what the height of the pendulum is going to be. So the height also is a function of t. I'm going to take advantage of the fact that I have a right triangle and that the that vertical there is going to be L times the cosine of theta. And that means that the height at any time is going to be L, the length of the entire string, minus L times the cosine of theta. So now I have those two pieces of information that need to go into the formula for conservation of energy. Those two pieces of information are that the velocity is equal to L times d theta dt, and that h is equal to L minus L cosine of theta. All right, let's plug some values into some formulas. So I start by just substituting for v and for h. And then I'm going to do a little bit of algebra, take the L outside of where it is being squared, and then multiply mg, or mg into that parentheses L minus L cosine of theta. And then, similar to what I did with the arc length, I'm going to take the derivative of both sides with respect to t. 
Now, while this looks very complicated, there's a bunch of stuff in there that's not that complicated. For example, MGL and C are both constants, so those derivatives would end up having to be zero. If I look at the first part there, 1 half ML squared times d theta dt squared, uh, if I take the derivative, the 2 is going to come down and clearly cancel with the 1 half. Then remember I'm taking the derivative with respect to t, so the chain rule would indicate that I need the second derivative of theta with respect to t both times. Again, that is the derivative of d theta dt. Now if I look at the potential energy part of the equation, um, the derivative of cosine is negative sine of theta, and so when I put that together, I will end up with a plus mgl sine of theta Again, the chain rule requires that I take the derivative of theta with respect to t, so that will give me a d theta dt, and the derivative of c is zero, so I get that all of that is equal to zero. Now, the two terms on the left side, they share an m in common, they share one factor of l in common, and they share d theta dt in common, so I can factor all of those out, and I am left with l the second derivative of theta with respect to t plus g sine of theta, and of course that has to be equal to zero. Now, let's take a look at this equation. Um, I'm gonna take advantage of the fact that we can assume that d theta dt is not equal to zero. If d theta dt was equal to zero, that would mean that the pendulum was just hanging in that equilibrium solution, or that equilibrium position, which I think is fair to say that is a solution to the equation, but it certainly isn't an interesting one. So if I assume that d theta dt is not equal to zero, m is not equal to zero, and l is not equal to zero, so I can divide both sides of that equation by ml d theta dt, and I get a much simpler form of the equation. L times theta double prime plus G times the sine of theta is equal to zero. Now, if you have experience with differential equations, you'll recognize here that this is uh, looking really nice, but it is not a linear differential equation. The, in, the dependent variable theta is inside of sine, and so then that means that this is non-linear, and we like our formulas to end up being linear, what we will take advantage of is the fact that for small values of theta, the sine of theta is approximately equal to theta. In fact, if theta is in between plus or minus 0.3 radians, or about 17 degrees, the sine of theta is equal to theta with a one decimal point accuracy. In most cases, a pendulum is going to be swinging with an angle that is less than 17 degrees, so this assumption is going to be fine. And now we have the formula that describes the motion of a pendulum. L theta double prime plus G theta is equal to zero. As always, thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and I will see you in the next one.